one idea that's very common in our culture is that poverty is caused by lack of money and that's a really stupid idea because money is very difficult to handle I had clients who were, you know, drug addicts and the worst possible thing that could happen to them was that they got some money they're just done, first of all, you know, they were hanging around with people who were little on the sociopathic side and so, especially if they weren't that bright and couldn't defend themselves very well as soon as they got money, well, it was off to the bar with all the friends and, you know, one guy I remember in particular you know, every time he got his, his disability check he was gone for five days, you usually found him in a ditch you know, because he'd just go to the bar spent every cent he had on alcohol and cocaine and wake up in a ditch, three quarters dead uh, eventually completely dead and, you know, then he was ashamed and horrified and repentant and he'd straighten himself out again and then that was all well and good until as long as he was broke until the next check showed up and then bang, the same thing so, you know, it's not like money is necessarily a good for everyone, it's hard to manage money it's really easy for it to disappear, I mean elderly people have a hell of a time now because, you know, crooks are contacting them on the internet non-stop and so, just giving people money money is like, it's like pouring water in their hands it's not that helpful, not necessarily that helpful and then, of course, contributors to poverty are well, it's not so good to have a low IQ you know, people don't like the idea of IQ because it seems so arbitrary, you know, you have a high IQ, well, it's not like you deserve it exactly it's, you're set up that way pretty much right from the beginning, it's very, 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 very stable you can make a high IQ person stupider by, you know, not educating them up to the level of their possibility but taking someone who has a low IQ and trying to raise that, it's like, if you can figure out how to do that well, you know it's Nobel Prize time for you, because people have tried that a lot and most recently with those, you know, lumino lumosity games and that sort of thing and the evidence that those produce anything other than brilliant performances on the lumosity game itself is basically zero we haven't been able to figure out how to see, because intelligence is a cross-domain phenomena and you can get really good in a single domain by practicing like mad and what you'd want is to practice like mad in a single domain and hope that it generalized to other domains that's the holy grail of intelligence increase it's like, no no one's done it, people claim it but the claims never hold up and people have been trying for a long time to do it and they haven't been able to do it and differences in IQ really make a difference, you know, I mean you guys, average IQs, probably 125, 130 at, at 115, you're at the 85th percentile and, and 115 would barely get you going for, for a hard university 130, you're probably graduate school material you know, 145, you're up there at the range where you can probably do pretty much whatever you want, although as you get smarter, the scatter between your abilities increases so you might have a very high verbal IQ but not be so good at mathematics or the other way around but it's a massive contributor to lifetime success and I don't know what to do about that 